Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I thought I would do kind of like a Sephora try-on haul because I got a few more items from the VIB sale that you wouldn't have seen in my haul because I made another order. <laughs> Actually, I went to the store. Uh, I think, yeah. Did I just, no, I did do an order and I went to the store, so. I do have a few things to try and I thought I would just try them all in one video um, so that I don't do like another haul video <laughs> right after the other one. Yeah, so I think we'll just get started. I'm sure you can hear tons of noises in the background like that. I don't know what that is. Someone's working on something, but I have to have the window open because I will die of heat. Um, yesterday was supposedly the hottest day in 150 years. It was 34 degrees. Um, if you guys don't know, I live in Canada, so that is very hot for us. Um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna start sweating very soon. This like sheen you see is actually just my skincare. I don't have anything on my face yet because I have basically a full face to try. Some of these things I already hauled I believe but I still haven't used them so this is also like a first impressions video. So yeah I'm gonna stop rambling. So the first thing I have is the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Turnaround Moisturizer Charlotte's Magic Cream so I'm not really sure if this I'm well I guess it's like a primer but it is also a moisturizer uh, I'm just gonna read a bit about it because I really hate when I make videos and I talk about something and it's like completely off when I can just check on Sephora so let me see, Magic Cream. Oh, and this is actually like a sample size. There is a mini size of this, but it, it's this product here. It's 0.5 ounces and it's $40. This I actually got as the birthday gift from last year. It came with the Magic Cream and the Pillow Talk Jewel Lips. This is an anti-aging moisturizer with hyaluronic acid to visibly plump skin and diminish the look of wrinkles, leaving skin glowing and prepped for flawless makeup. Okay, so I was right. It's a moisturizer, but to be used as a primer. I actually do have my moisturizer on, but it's like a really light lotion that I'm using right now, so I think this will be fine. I have super dry skin if you didn't know. Oh, this looks very thick. I haven't used this yet, but it looks like I have because it's just like the product was lying on its side in my drawer. Another reason why I'm filming this video is because I have so many um, products in my new makeup drawer again. So, and it was like getting overwhelming. <laughs> This is, okay, this is very thick. I was not expecting that. So I'm not gonna use too much because I'm actually using a tinted moisturizer today. So another moisturizing product. Yeah, this is definitely a primer moisturizer because it feels um, kind of like a smoothing primer does, like a bit silicone-y. I think I have used this before in a sample, but I don't remember anything about it, so. Okay, so there's the primer. Oh, and I did also want to put on a lip plumper. I'm gonna do that now because I want to see if it actually does anything, so while I film the rest of this video, we can see. Um, this is the Milk Makeup. Electric Glossy Lip Plumper. I actually bought this a long time ago, like even before the VIB sale. Because I was really, I actually, I already talked about this in a video, how I wanted to do like a lip plumper 
like showdown kind of thing. <laughs> so I'm trying to try all the ones I have and then see like if I can make a video somehow about that without having to like apply them all on camera because I'll like ruin my lips. <laughs> so this is the packaging. I got this one for the color mostly because it's um, described as like a coral I think. It's the shade Wired. So I wanted it to be a lip plumper but also like a product I could use as my lip product but today I have something else to use. So let's see, it's one of these like squeezy tubes. Can you even see what I'm doing? I have seen, uh, well, I've only seen one person use this on YouTube. It was Julia Adams, MUA, who I watched like all her videos and she hated it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't have high hopes. It smells like pine. I'm just trying to get a thin layer on because she had like those strings when you open your mouth and I really don't want that. So, okay, it's just like a sheer uh, wash of color. I don't think I feel anything as of yet. But I, I like the smell of this. It smells like a Christmas tree, but I do like those kind of smells. So I'll just keep this on and I'll let you know if it does anything or we can see at the end. Um, so the next thing I wanted to apply is a... Should I put this on first? No. Uh, okay. Um, this is a, another mini size. This is the Tarte Maracuya Tinted Hydrator. Um, I just got the mini because I don't need more base products. Um, I have the shade 13 and Fair, no, Fair Light Neutral, which is the same shade I have in their bold foundation that's... I know you heard it. You have to have heard of this. <laughs> Um, the same shade I have in the foundation, which I think is a good shade for me. So I haven't tried this yet. Oh, it's, it has a, like a thing on the end here. Ugh, and I forgot to wet my sponge. And this is starting to tingle. I will be back though. Okay, I got my sponge wet and I zoomed you in so you can actually see what I'm doing. This is starting to tingle a lot especially like here um, and I don't have I don't have those stringy things yet so I think the key with this is you have to use a small amount like don't apply it like you would like a lip gloss because it's quite thick the texture anyway so let's try this maybe I should shake it first because it's been in my drawer just sitting there for a long time oh it's not more liquidy than I thought it would be I'm just going to start with this much. Okay, it's um, very sheer so far, but it is a tinted hydrator. It's not a foundation, so I'm not like too surprised by that, but I do think I can add another layer. I feel like it just like absorbed directly into my skin. <laughs> Let's try some more. So another like serving. This is feeling so weird. It feels like, um, you know when your foot's asleep? That's what it feels like on my lips. So probably the fact that I'm using a sponge to apply this is making it even more sheer than it already is, but I'm trying to be a brush person <laughs> just because like everyone I watch on YouTube that uses brushes their makeup looks flawless but I think my skin is just too dry for that. Some products do work fine with the brush but 
I usually tend to like my base more when I use a sponge. I think that did give me like some coverage. I feel like my skin looks more even here. Um, but you still see like all the glow from the skincare and maybe the magic cream that I put on. Yeah, I like how this looks. Um, because I have some like breakouts healing here, I will go in with um, a concealer just to cover that up. Usually I don't do this step, but my skin, well, I shouldn't even say my skin's not been good. It's been fine. It's me that's like picking at it. So yeah. Um, so what I've been loving to use as a spot concealer is my Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. I do not like this under my eyes, but I like it for my face because it's a really good shade match for my face. Um, and it blends in like really well. But I do not like this packaging. See what happens? All the product is like stuck up there and gets all around. So yeah, it's one thing. But So I just apply just a tiny amount and then I just pat it in. So it is like a thicker texture than the tinted hydrator, but because I just applied it in small areas. It doesn't look too bad. Anyway, I feel like you can still see some of the redness, but that's fine. I just want it, it to be more even. Um, I don't want to cake concealer on top of the tinted moisturizer because then you'll definitely see where I put the concealer and you know. I do like how this looks so far. So the reason I hesitated to put that on first is because I have the new Fenty Beauty um, Bright Fix Eye Brightener in the shade Seashell. This is instantly hydrates, brightens and blurs, light as air, sheer to buildable coverage that lasts. But it does say on the Sephora app that you can use this with the Fenty concealer. So I'm not expecting this to be like a concealer product. It's more in my opinion, like a color corrector. Um, but depending on the other base products you have on, it might be good enough on its own. And I did get this because I also have the Fenty Eavesdrop, and I thought like these two probably would be really good together because when I use this with a regular concealer, I find you can really see where I put the concealer and like where the line is from where the concealer stops and where this product starts because this is such like a unique texture. So yeah, but also just because, I don't know, for some reason I have to try every Fenty product. So this is the packaging. I really like this kind of applicator here. It looks like it would help to not get like so much product out at once. It's just like a little dropper kind. It's like very hard plastic. Let me shake it though, because I'm concerned about how liquidy this might be. And I also don't know if I got the right shade, but we'll find out. And I'm going to just read how they recommend to apply it because I don't think I should use a sponge for this since it's so supposedly like lightweight. I have to use apply a small amount and tap to blend. Buildable and easy to layer with your skincare. Can also be layered with Pro Filter Concealer. Works well with fingers, brush, or sponge. Well, you said tap to blend, so that's what I'm gonna do. Do you, I wonder if you apply this like directly because of how the applicator is, but I'm a bit worried about doing that. Okay, yeah, you have to be, while it does allow for like a small amount of product to come out, you have to control it by not squeezing too hard because there's like a lot of air in this. 
So that's all the product I got. So this is the shade. Um, I did try and get a concealer shade because they do have like color correcting shades in this, like peach and I don't know, some yellow, I guess. But I wanted it for a concealer shade because I don't really color correct. Um, under my eyes, although maybe I should because they're getting like quite dark in the corners Okay That just like immediately absorbed into my skin Let me make sure I'm in frame when I do this side So, do we see a difference? I think we do. I think it looks brighter. But yeah, definitely didn't add coverage, but it did brighten, I feel. So I will go in with a concealer on top just to see because it does say you can layer it. But so far, I would wear this on its own with this makeup even so yeah i'm sure this is gonna work really well with the blurring skin tint i'll have to try them together and it, i just hope it doesn't like crease because it feels very oily almost i thought it would be similar to my tatcha the pearl this thing <laughs> that's in my project pan that i will never pan I'm gonna have to start weighing it because I won't, I don't know. This is like how much I've used, if you can tell. But this is a lot more like a thicker texture. And I do feel like this brightened more. This is more really like a skincare. It's like an eye cream with a slight like tint in it. But this is more like a makeup product, I feel. I wouldn't use the two together though because then you would have like three layers of product under your eyes if you go in with a concealer after. So I hope I don't mess this up, but I'm gonna go in with my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea concealer, aqua sealer, whatever. This is the only like non-new product that I'm trying today because this is another product in my project pen and you can't tell because there's all like dried product around the edges, but it's down to here um, So I'm pretty excited because I think I'm gonna use this whole thing up and then I can Start using other concealers because this one is getting very old But I thought this would work well with the tinted hydrator first of all because it's the same brand and this is a very sheer concealer um, It's very liquidy as you can see hence the name aqua sealer I'm sure you can hear someone mowing their lawn. But I'm only gonna go in with that amount first. And I do use my sponge for this product. Okay, that seems to have worked well on top of the Fenty. So let me try and put some more here. I'm really trying to use um, not a lot of concealer lately, because I feel like it just makes me look worse. Like a concealer should, um, you know, even out any discoloration under your eyes, but I find like having more product in that area at my age just makes me look older. So I'm trying to go in with a very small amount. So there's the concealer. It did add some coverage, but it's still very, lightweight but that's fine because again I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer I don't want to put like a full coverage concealer on top of that I'm actually really liking that so I'm really liking this base so far and this stop tingling I don't know if you can tell maybe it did like smooth a little but I don't feel like it plumped my lips so so I have some more cream products to try so I'll start with those I don't even know where to begin because I bought way too many 
cream blushes. Well, this one is actually not a cream blush, but a cream bronzer. It's the Kaja Play Bento Blendable Sculpting Trio. Um, this is something I saw in store. I wasn't going to... It was on my loves list, but I didn't... I'm ha I have to close the window. Okay, so I closed the window, but also my battery was dying, so I changed my battery and then I had to reset up everything. So, as I was saying, this is the Kaja Play Bento Blendable Sculpting Trio. And what intrigued me about this is that, well, first of all, it's like a nice little compact where you have a blush, highlighter, and bronzer. But the bronzer is a cream bronzer, so that was quite exciting. Um, so this is the blush shade, really nice, like neutral pink, I would say. This is the highlighter, which looks really pretty. And this is the bronzer, which I have swatched already. This looks quite similar to my other cream bronzer <laughs> from Fenty. Let's compare the two. Oh, maybe not. This is the Fenty Butter Biscuit, and this is... Oh, by the way, this little trio is in 01. I think they have... Do they have two or three of these? Anyway, this is the lightest one. So, I would say this looks more warm-toned than the Fenty. So, let's see. So, the other two products in this trio are powder. So I'm going to apply the bronzer first. It is a bit difficult to open the bronzer because it's the last layer. So you have to get some like leverage. I'm going to try using this um, Billion Dollar Brushes contour brush. I actually have like I sorted my brushes by cream products versus powder. So these are all cream product brushes and this was in there so I guess I used it for some other cream product so let's see how this works yeah it's definitely picking up the product Ooh, oh my god uh, okay <laughs> so far this is a lot more pigmented than the Fenty because with the Fenty, I know I go in quite heavy and I do not get that much pigment on. Yes, and it's definitely warmer than the Fenty. I might have brought it down a bit too far with this brush, but this blended like super easily. Maybe I'm too close now. I think I really like this. I feel like this shade is more flattering on me in the summertime because it, it looks more like a sun-kissed shade, whereas like a cooler tone is more suitable for winter months, at least on my skin tone, I think. Wow, that was so easy to blend. Just put a bit more like here. Oh. Yeah, you do have to be careful with how much product you pick up because it's very creamy. You can see. Oh, I guess that doesn't really tell you much, but yeah, it's like very emollient. I really like that. I feel like you can't even like, it just looks like my skin really. That's what I like about cream products. Like you can't distinguish them from your base. It just all looks natural. Okay, I really like that so far. Should I put a bit on my nose? Okay, so I 
think I want to stick to cream products today. Well, at least for my blush. I don't have a cream highlighter, so I'll go back to this for the highlighter, but I won't use the blush today because I have two other very exciting blushes, at least in my opinion. <laughs> So I did pick up one of the Melt Cream Blush Lights. These were like impossible to get. Um, they were sold out online, but I found this in store and I think it was like the last one in this shade. So I got this shade Sandy Cheeks. And I don't even remember. Yeah, this is not one of the shimmery ones. So that's the shade. I love this already just looking at it it's like very peachy it's what i like i did swatch this as you could see but i haven't used it on my face so i got that during the bib sale and then this product i just picked up recently for no reason <laughs> actually it was because of babs beauty she's one of my favorites she was raving about this this is the Say Dew Blush in the shade Poppy. This was also sold out online. Sephora Online is not doing well lately, but I found it in store. So this is more like a coral shade. And it has this really fun like doe foot applicator. Oh man, what should I use? This is, okay, so if I go with the other one, it's going to be very warm toned. Mm. I think I'm going to go with this, with the melt, but I, I really want to try this. I guess for another video, maybe like a full face of cream products or something. Yeah, just because with the lip product, I think I'm going to use... And yeah, I don't know. I think this will be more suitable. So again, I need to know how they suggest to apply. <laughs> oh, so the different shades have different usage. That's interesting. So this one is Sandy Cheeks. It says, use a finger to effortlessly apply this multi-use hue on the cheeks, eyes, and lips for a natural beachy glow. Okay, if you say so. Oh, now I'm interested. Like, what makes them different? <gasps> oh, because this is actually not the shade I originally wanted. It's described as a burnt peach, which I feel is very accurate and something I still like, but I wanted golden hour because golden hour is a bright coral with gold pearl. It kind of looks quite similar. On, in the swatch, but it just has like a glow. As you can see, these are still sold out. The only one that's not is Lynx and Sundown, but those are more like bronze shades. So anyway, I'm going to look up more about the different shades of that because that's very interesting that it's the same product, but different shades do different things. I like that. Um, so for this, it said use your finger. So, okay, if you say so. Oh yeah, this is very creamy. It feels kind of like the bronzer, the Kaja bronzer. I'm worried now that I picked up too much product. Okay, breathe. And I have to remember not to put my blush so low on my face. So you're just supposed to like swipe it on, like how you use your finger, they say. Okay, but you still have to like blend it out because just patting it was not like blending the product. It was just patting it in different places. So I started putting my blush like in upwards motion. I'm still not on the train of applying your blush like here because 
I don't know, for some reason, I feel like that looks, if you do this, you're gonna see like highlighter, blush, bronzer. Whereas if you blend your blush into your face, then it's more like normal. Like, not normal, <laughs> that was offensive. It's more like natural, like that's how the sun would give you color. I don't know, that's maybe just because of my face shape. Because if I do this and apply my blush and then go normal, my blush will be like down here. So yeah, this is how I, I have to apply it. Almost like under my eye, really. Okay, I think that's blended and I love it. Again, because it's a cream product, you can't even see like where it stops and where it starts. It just looks like part of my base. Okay, I'm happy about this color. Um, I do like brighter blushes usually, but I think this is working for like the rest of my face today. And I could use this even on like a no makeup makeup day. Um, whereas this one might look a bit more punchy, but yeah. And it didn't disrupt my makeup underneath or anything so i really like that this if you're wondering is because of my glasses it's not that i didn't blend it um okay so far everything is really good i said i was gonna go back in with this but i have to show you another highlighter that i picked up it's the Aether Beauty Supernova Crushed Diamond Highlighter. This was influenced by Tara Babies. Um, actually, this was on sale, plus the VIP sale was happening, so I got a really good deal on it. Um, this is the packaging. So this brand is all like about crystals and being environmentally conscious and all of that stuff. So their packaging is fully recyclable. So it still feels like high quality, but it is cardboard and there's no magnets because magnets are not recyclable, if you didn't know. So it has like this band, but it's really nice because the band starts like, focus, under, so it doesn't, cover like this nice embossing kind of thing um but yeah so this is the shade pure diamond dust i thought that was the name of the product i'm so confused oh yeah no the name of the product is supernova crushed diamond highlighter but i have the shade pure diamond dust and this was like i said influenced by tara babies this is like her favorite highlighter in her collection i believe Oh, and they always come with little cards that have um, like affirmations on them. This one says, let the star shine wash over you like a cleansing mist of white light. So that's what this brand is about. I know some people don't like crystals and stuff, but whatever. It's fun, okay? Just relax. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. And now I'm look now that I'm looking at it, I feel like this might be a little much for this look, but I'm very curious about this because I th believe Tara Babies has a pan in hers, and she had she owns like every piece of makeup that exists. So to me, that means like this must be really good, and she bought backups of it during the sale. So yeah, and I was actually waiting for her to say what the shade she had was because I couldn't figure it out on the app um, but then she did mention it in a video so I was like yes that's the one I want let's swatch it first because oh it feels very interesting very smooth but not as like silicone-y as I thought it would I feel like that's a word I say in every video but that's just a lot of makeup feels like that lately. Like they just put more silicones in it to make it like 
more swatchable and like nice to look at but doesn't necessarily mean it performs well on the face you know actually this might work can you yeah see how it kind of like almost blended into my skin but you can definitely see the shine okay this might work actually and let's swatch the kaja next to it so this one has like a more peachy undertone like a peachy pink that looks really pretty too it's this here so you can see like yeah this one's more like a pinky peach undertone and this one's more like a cool silver they both look nice <laughs> Okay, but I have to use the Aether Beauty just because it's calling to me. Oh, again, I need to read how it says to apply it. I just have to. I hope these aren't being discontinued because they're, they're actually still on sale. And this one is not even on the site anymore, but they have the pink one. Mm, that concerns me how to use. Can be used on cheeks, eyes, lips, face, and decollete. Oh, okay. So it doesn't matter how you apply it, basically. I'm going to use this Milani all over blending brush because I feel like it would pick up the product better. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> I like it. So this is one like you might want to buff into the skin because I don't know if you can tell like it's almost like a powder to cream kind of texture but if you use like a yeah this was a good brush to use because I feel like if you go in with a super flimsy like a fan brush you'll only pick up the glittery parts and not like the base of it. So yeah, probably like a natural bristle brush would be the best, but I don't think I, I don't own any natural bristle brushes, only synthetic. Yeah, this is always the side that <laughs> looks way better because the window is there. Um, so you can really see the glow. Yeah, and I like that I don't have, like, even though it's quite silver, I don't have, like, a white cast from it, which is good. See, I always feel like I didn't put enough on this side, but I think it's just the lighting. Okay, that's enough on the cheeks now for the nose. Okay, now that I look super <laughs> greasy and oily, which is how I like to look. Uh, I think that's enough. Okay, I also really like this. I like that it's kind of glittery, but not glitter, if that makes any sense. Like, it's just very shiny. Okay, <laughs> stop. I feel like apply highlight forever and not even that I'm putting more on just like I don't know blending it um okay so the base is done right yeah we did bronzer blush highlighter and I love everything so far yeah this update again on the lip product doesn't tingle anymore I don't feel like it did much in the way of plumping, but it maybe smooths some lines out. But it feels good, like it's not sticky or anything and I didn't get the strings. So again, apply a very light, apply a very light layer if you have that product. I don't know if I tell you to 
run out and buy it, but if you have it already and you're wondering how to use it, I would apply a very thin layer because you'll still feel the tingle at first, but it won't be too gloopy. So next we'll do eyeshadow. This video is going to be a thousand years long. So I'm just going to do one eye on camera because yeah, I'll be here forever. And this is another product that's not new, but I haven't tried it yet. And it's the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette that, as I told you in one of my videos at some point, that I was adding this to my Shop My Stash because this is like the best time of year to use this palette. And if I don't use it now, I'm not gonna use it until next year because this is the color story. Well, you can see everything. It's very spring summer to me, like very pastel, but also with some pops of color and some deeper shades that you can get some depth with. So I think it's time to finally peel this off. I'm a bit like, I don't know, for some reason, I love looking at this palette, but it intimidates me a little because I'm not sure I'm not sure how to like navigate it if that makes sense but it definitely has a lot of mattes that I would use in the crease and it has a cream shade which is a bonus for me because I like to set my base with that so I'm gonna go in with my with my Urban Decay Primer Potion as usual. I've started really liking this product actually because I found out that as long as you don't apply any powder around your eye area, this is actually a really nice product. And it's also in my project pan. Uh, I have to film the update for my project pan. I don't know how I'm gonna do it because I didn't really know how I was doing it in the first place. So I didn't like weigh anything or mark anything. So I'm gonna have to figure something out because I was supposed to film it for May and it's almost the end of May. So yeah. So I will go in with that cream shade, which is called Momentum. There's a close up just to set my primer. This is a nice bright shade because it has almost leaning more like peach. Yeah, I'm just gonna do one eye on camera, so. But let me set the other eye anyway. Yeah, so that gave a nice clean base. Now what do I do? <laughs> I feel like, I mean this, any look you do with this is probably going to be <clears throat> either blue or purple. So where do I, I don't think I want to do blue today, although I do like blue eyeshadow. You could also do a neutral look actually, like with these like more champagne shades. Um, but I also don't want to do that because that's going to be boring. Maybe, well, I could do like a pinky purple look probably. If I go in the crease with this shade, which is Utopia. So there's the shade. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm working with a very small table, so I think this is the best way. So as usual with my transition shade I kind of just put it everywhere because it's gonna get hidden by the other shadows I apply anyway and it's really just to have like a base down and something to build on to so the shade is quite light in the like actual crease I think I'm gonna go in with off balance 
which is this like pinky purple lavenderish kind of shade. There is not a lot of kick up in the pan for like pastels I find. Usually they are very powdery but not these ones. So with this shade I'm just trying to add some depth. Really blendable so far. I like that shade. And then for the lid, I was thinking of doing this supernova. I think this is a duochrome. Yeah, I think this is like a pinky gold shift, maybe. But I really like how it looks. Um, I wonder, no, I don't think I need my NYX glitter glue because that looks more like a metallic. Okay, let me just swatch it. Why am I just not swatching it? Uh, yeah, that looks really pretty. Yeah, that's definitely a duochrome. I swatched on the worst possible spot, but yeah. And I'm gonna use my finger if I can. My nails are long again and broken, so don't look at them. Ooh, yeah, definitely has like a pinky gold shift. It's probably like described somewhere, but who knows. By the way, this palette has 18 eyeshadows and four ready to layer textures. So there's nine mattes, six high shine creamy metallics, which that must have been one of those one glitter powder, and two sheer multi-reflective shadows. I don't really know which would they, which are the sheer. Was that supposed to be sheer? Because that's, you know, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it was, this is more like a topper, but for me, I like this kind of look. So yeah, so underneath the eye, I am going to basically do the same thing. Maybe I'll just use the same brush because it has a nice point. A lot of points, very round, but it's a nice shape for underneath. So I went in with Utopia, right? Yeah. This like, what would you call that? I don't know. Pinky brown. And I don't want to do too much. Like I might even just leave it like that. Maybe get a bit more. I don't know if I want to darken it anymore. I don't, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. For the inner corner, there's a lot of options I could go with. So if I wanted to keep it more like purpley pink, there's this cosmic shade and then this shade galaxy would also be nice but there's also this super moon that looks fun let's swatch them so this is what those look like maybe this one was one of those sheer things they were talking about i think huda likes to do that a lot these like sheer toppers so this was cosmic more pinky one this is actually, now that I'm looking at it, looks too dark for inner corner. This is galaxy and this is super moon. I think I have to use super moon, which was um, more like flaky. And now that I look at it, it has like different colors of glitter in it, like pink and purple. It's really pretty. I don't know how well that's going to pick up on a brush, so I'm going to use my pinky because it looks very flaky in the pan and it doesn't have a lot of base yet. It's basically glitter, but in like a soft, like a smooth glitter way. I'll just put a touch. Okay, that, that wasn't a touch. That was a lot. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, I just need to like blend that a bit, I think. 
think. But I'm also worried that I'll get glitter on my face if I do that. That's really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other eye and then I'll come back. I actually have a new brow product to use, so I will be back for the brows. Okay, so I also did my mascara because I'm not opening any more mascaras. I'm trying to use these three again from my project. Are these in my project pen? Uh, I think so. Um, the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise, the primer, the luminous, no, voluminous base is the primer that I use with this. This is getting, I think, almost to the point where I have to get rid of it. It's very like, like, um, I'll show you. On the brush, there's like, see how the bristles are just like very gloopy with product now? So I think that's on its way out. And then I use the Wet n Wild Mega Length for my bottom lashes because I like how it, it it's like a, um, a plastic brush. So it kind of like combs and um, separates my lower lashes and this would be much too like voluminous for that area at least that's how I like my lower lashes to look um, so yeah I wanted to come back to do my brows because I finally got my hands on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze Brow Styling Wax um, so this is an extreme hold styling wax that lifts and holds brows in place for a feathered effect. To maintain optimal product appearance and efficacy, oh, cap must remain tightly closed at all times when not in use. Okay. So I read up on how to use this because it's kind of like there's a huge paragraph how to use this. So this is the packaging, just like the pot. Um, plasticky and the product itself is completely clear you can see like you can see right through it so it says that you're supposed to apply this to clean brows so I was thinking I would use my um, essence make me brow first and then put this but because it said apply to clean brows I don't think I should do that so I'm gonna go in with just this, I guess. At least this will be the first product I put on. And it said to use a spoolie. Well, they have a brush that came with this, but it has really bad reviews on Sephora. I kind of wanted it, but now I'm like, do I really need that? It's basically just a spoolie. So it's just a spoolie, but on the other end, it's like a spatula. So you pick up the product with the spatula and then you put it on the back, on the cap it said. So, okay, that's what I'm gonna do, I guess. And it says a little product goes a long way. So maybe I can even just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I do have this kind of, I have this, but it's kind of big. But I will use it. This is the Tarte, um, I don't know, some kind of foundation brush that I never use, but I should because I have the foundation that goes with it. So you pick up the foundation and then you blend it. So I'll just use that as the spatula. That's how much I'm going to use, this tiny amount. But now how do I get on the cap? Okay. I just put it like that. This is not how I like to do things. I hate like m getting makeup on my packaging. It's like a weird thing I have, but that's what it said to do, so. And it's probably just to avoid having, like picking up too much. Cause if you go in directly with your spoolie, you're gonna like get a huge chunk of product. So then it just said like you basically just rub your spoolie into it and twirl it around so that you get rid of any excess. I feel like this can't be enough product. But 
we'll see. And then you just sculpt. And with the spatula that they have, they said you could use it to flatten, like to stick your brows down to your face. Um, I'm just going to use this to do that. And it's supposed to have extreme hold. Yes. Yep, it certainly does. Because <laughs> I just like pasted my brow hairs down there, if you can see. But yeah, I think I definitely need more product for the other side. Okay, but well, there's a difference, which I think you can see. It doesn't feel like sticky or um, stiff or anything, which I like. So let me just get like the same amount. Yeah, definitely picked up more that time, but maybe I can go back to the other side. So the thing is, if you have, like I have long brow hairs, I feel, but I don't have thick brows. So if I were to only use this product, like yes, it lifts the brow hairs, but then you see like all the sparseness. So for me, I feel like I have to go in with another product to like fill that in. Oh my god, it's getting... <laughs> okay, yeah, I definitely like laminated that brow down. But I do like how it's lifting the hairs. Because I like to have these front hairs sticking up and then the rest kind of like normal, you know? Ooh, almost drop that. And when I use like my regular gel, I don't find it lifts them at all. So that's what that looks like with only the brow freeze. Maybe if I, should I zoom you in so you can see? So it does make my brows look fuller because it made the hair stand up. Um, which I like, but yeah, I feel like I still need a bit of color. So maybe I should just let that dry and then I'll go in with just a bit of my Make Me Brow, just for like the color part of it, but I do really like the look of this. And if I was someone that used brow pencils, you could go in with like a fine brow pencil after, which I might do one day. But I don't really have a fine brow pencil right now. I do have the Anastasia Brow Wiz, but the color is way too warm, I find, so I don't like to use it. I'm only keeping that because I keep wanting to use it to do faux freckles, but I always forget about it, so <laughs> I don't know, maybe one day. Um, yeah, so that's how that looks. What else do I have? Oh, so for my lip product, I don't even feel like I need to remove the milk um, electric glossy lip plumper because it kind of just um, feels like a lip balm. And also I've been drinking coffee. So, well, to show you, first of all, this is my cute mug that I hauled in my Valentine's Day haul. <laughs> but 
but it works very well for cold coffee. I make like my own Starbucks cold brew kind of thing. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted to show you that that's like a bit of product came off on the mug, but not much really because it was already absorbed. Um, because for my lip product, I wanted to revisit this Merit Shade Slick. I've mentioned this a few times in videos, I feel like, but I've only actually used it once and I think it was off camera. So let me try this again. And it's um, more like a warm tone, which is why I went with that blush. This is the shade Au Naturel. So yeah, it's, um, if I remember correctly, very sheer. It is like, if I didn't say, a tinted lip oil. So it's not a liquid lipstick or even a lip gloss. It's a tinted lip oil. So it's not supposed to have a lot of color. I mean, it does have a lot of color, but it's not like opaque. Yeah, I think that goes. Uh, it's a little, <laughs> it's a little too peachy to go with my eyeshadow, but that's okay. I just really wanted to get a better feel of this product. It really is a lip oil, cause a lot of lip products lately are calling themselves lip oils, but they're not. For example, the Tarte Maracuya lip oil is like a very thick gloss um, and something else I had I felt like wasn't an oil, but I don't remember what it is. Anyway, this one really does feel oily, um, but not like too slippery. I don't know. I like it so far. So I think that's all the products. Oh yeah. For my setting spray, I didn't get a new setting spray from Sephora, at least. So I want to keep using my Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. I actually might add this to my project pan at some point because it's just like a mini size and it's getting old. And I'm already like down to here. I mean, that's not that much, but... Considering how many setting sprays I own, that's good. Um, the thing with this is I use a very small amount at a time because it's extremely dewy. So, and that's coming from me, someone who always wants to be dewy. So, just to warn you. So I hold it quite far from my face. I almost don't even spray it directly, it just kind of falls. Um, but yeah, maybe I should do one more, I don't know, I'm scared. Okay, that was three more, but I think that's good. So I think that's it for this video. Okay, let's try, let's just try it. Let's just put a little make me brow on top of this and see what happens. Just lightly because I don't want to disrupt the look. Yeah, so you know what I like about the Anastasia is it it is holding up my brows but when I put this through it they're still like malleable they're not like gelled stiff so that's really interesting I like that um, so just to go over I'm trying to do this now because I realize in other videos I'm just like okay that's it bye <laughs> I didn't like 
give uh, any details about anything, like how, like my first impressions. So uh, let's start from the primer. Um, obviously the primer, because I also used a new base product, I'm not sure which is like causing the goodness, but <laughs> I did really like this. Um, I feel like maybe it did like kind of smooth because sometimes, especially with when I use a very like lightweight hydrating products, I can see like my pores more visibly, but it looks pretty good considering how like shiny and oily I am. So I think I like this. I don't, I would not purchase this though um, because of the price. It's just a bit too much because I would only use it as a primer. I have like other skincare um, and for that I feel like it's just too pricey but I did like it. Um, what else did I try? The Fenty. I can't really give much, like I can't give a review on this obviously because this is the first time I used it but I do feel like my under eye looks very I don't know, it just looks good. Um, it looks brighter than normal and I know that because, like I said, that Tarte, the Tarte Aqua Sealer, this is not new to me. So I know like what it looks like and I feel like this underneath did help to give it more brightness. And I can see that the two products worked fine. I do have a bit of creasing but um, I wouldn't say that's because of this because I know this does crease on me and I didn't put any powder underneath which uh, when I use this product I don't because I feel like it doesn't work well with the powder that I use which is the Becca under eye brightening powder. These two don't go good together so that's why I didn't powder but I feel like I don't really need to like um, you can't see like any places where the product really built up. You'd have to look like really close. So I'm really okay with that. Um, and I did like how this just blended right in. And as you saw, I used a very small amount. Again, I think the key to many products on the market right now is you use a small amount of them. <laughs> and then they always look pretty good. Um, the Tarte, the Maracuja Tinted Hydrator, I think I really like this. Um, my skin looks very dewy. Again, I don't know if it's this. I mean, it's probably. Because this is not supposed to be dewy. This Magic Cream didn't, doesn't say so. And it doesn't look like there's no like shimmers in it or anything. This actually feels very similar to the Bobbi Brown face base, like that texture. I should compare those because, yeah. But I think this is giving me some kind of glow. It feels very, my skin feels very hydrated. There's no spots where it's like clinging to anything. It's not even creasing like anywhere. Usually I have a crease in my forehead line here and I don't. Or sometimes between my brows also don't have it there so that's very exciting to me uh, and it worked well with every other product that I put on top of it so I think that's good um, the blush I loved it maybe for this look I could have went this one maybe would have been a better choice the say but I love the the formula of the melt. So I would definitely be interested in checking out more shades of that even though I have <laughs> so many other cream products I should be using before doing so. Um, the Kaja, I only used the bronzer but I loved it. Um, it blended so seamlessly and it's a really good shade for me especially for winter months and I was a bit concerned it looked it was going to be really similar to my other bronzers, but it is a bit more warm than any other bronzer I have, I feel like. Um, so I really like that and I'm glad that I have this in my collection. I really 
want to try the highlighter in this. The Aether Beauty. I love it. I love it a lot. Especially for a powder product. I mean, like I said, it does feel kind of like a cream, like a powder to cream almost. But for a powder highlighter, this is probably the best looking powder highlighter I have aside from my Becca ones because it doesn't look like powdery on the face, which I love. The brow freeze, really like it so far. My brows are still lifted. The lip product, oh yeah, the, the plumper. I mean, I already updated you throughout this video, but I didn't hate it. Yeah, and I like that it didn't wear off weirdly. Like it, it just ended up absorbed into my lips, but they didn't feel dry after. They felt hydrated, so I kind of like that product. And this lip product, the Merit, I really like how it feels. I don't know if I like, love the color of it on me. I don't know if it's just with the rest of the makeup I have on, but it's like very peachy, I guess. I wanted it to be more nude, which is why I got the shade Au Naturel, but it's more like peachy. Um, I think that's it. Oh, the eyeshadow palette. I really like this look. I don't feel like you need this palette to do a look like this, especially this lid shade. I feel like I've seen that before in other palettes, but the mattes blended out really nicely. And I really like the inner corner shade. Um, yeah, and I definitely need to get rid of this mascara because it's like crumbling onto my face. <laughs> but um, I think that's it. I hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, just let me know below, ask me any questions you want. Yeah, so I hope you like this video. I am trying to get some more videos up. I know there's been like a quite a large break in my uploading, um, but it's because I've been kind of stressed out lately. <laughs> there's a lot of things going on. I might talk about that in another video because I just don't feel like getting into that right now. But yeah, um, so subscribe if you wanna hear why I'm stressed out, I guess. Anyway, I hope you like this video. I think I said that already. If you did, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.